Hey guys, it's Michelle here with another type 1 diabetes video for you guys. Now a lot of you have requested to watch me do my T-Slim X2 insulin pump site change. So I was just about to sit down and do it this morning and I thought, let me set up my camera so that you guys can kind of just see all of the steps that are involved in changing an insulin pump site, especially for the T-Slim X2. And I hope this video will be helpful for you if you're already on an insulin pump and you're looking to switch to the T-Slim, that way you can see what all the steps are that are involved. Or let's say if you're on shots and you wanna see what it's like changing an insulin pump site, then this video is for you. I'm gonna go through each step in a lot of detail so you guys can see exactly what I do. And I'm not changing up my routine at all for you guys. This is exactly what I do every three days. And it's kind of like you're gonna be sitting here with me just as a friend as I change my insulin pump site. So let's get started. So here I have all the things on my table that I need to change my insulin pump site. This glass of water is not involved. I'm just thirsty this morning. So this is the actual site and I use the AutoSoft 90. It's kind of like the Medtronic Mio. You need a little syringe here to get the insulin out of the vial and fill your cartridge. And then the needle that goes on top of the syringe as well. This is the actual cartridge itself. You need this little key thing to get the cartridge out of the insulin pump, although you can use other things too, but this is just what's recommended. An alcohol swab and of course the holy grail, the liquid gold Nova Rapid insulin. And of course an insulin pump to change. So like I said, I'm on the T-Slim X2. I was on the Medtronic insulin pump before. I have some videos about my change and why I changed from Medtronic to the T-Slim. So definitely check those out. I will link all of my T-Slim videos up here for you guys to check out after this video. So first things first is I'm gonna take out my old site and disconnect just so that I'm completely disconnected for this process. I don't want to at all accidentally deliver any insulin to myself, that would be a disaster. My insulin pump is in my stomach, my site here. So I'm just gonna disconnect that and then gonna take that out. So I just kind of lift it up and there it is. So I'm gonna go into my insulin pump, go to options and click the down arrow here and click load. And then I'm going to click change cartridge and it'll tell me in order to change a cartridge, all insulin deliveries will be stopped, continue. Yes, make sure the infusion set is disconnected from your body. Are you ready to continue? Yes, so it's preparing for the cartridge. So it tells me to remove the cartridge and install a new one. So I'm gonna remove the old one. So I just use this little tag here. So you wanna hold it like kind of on one side because the cartridge is coming out the other side. I don't know, I find it. Yeah, okay, there we go. So it all of a sudden pops out and I find I quite often get like my nail caught in there, so be careful. This is old, this is gonna go in my sharps bin. I always make a pile of what is trash and what is sharps. And unfortunately having diabetes, you do accumulate some trash because all these products are wrapped and it really bothers me because I am environmentally conscious, but at the same time, there's not much we can do because I need this to live. So I do what I can outside of diabetes to not use a lot of plastic. So I'm opening up the syringe. And of course, make sure you wash your hands before you do your site. That's always very important and that you're using like a clean surface. I cleaned off this table before I started. And then you open up the needle that goes on top of the syringe. And then it's really easy. You just put it on top and you twist it clockwise. And now it's on. And then you just take the cap off and there you have it. What I already did and didn't explain to you guys is I cleaned off the top of my insulin bottle. So I just took an alcohol swab and just swiped it like that just to make sure it's clean. So when I fill my cartridge, I usually fill about 150 units, maybe a little bit less than that. So in order to, to do that with the T-Slim, I pull my plunger down to 200 units just because there's a lot of air that's involved when you fill and you have to get rid of that air. So let's fill this up so we push the air in. So I'm putting in 200 units of air, and then I'm gonna flip it over, let the pressure from inside the insulin vial fill the syringe. Okay, I'm gonna start pulling it out here to two, and don't worry at all about air bubbles at this point. So I've pulled it, pulled it out to 200. Um, you will have air in here, I've got lots of bubbles, but it doesn't matter and you'll see why. So the next step is to start the cartridge filling process. So what I'll normally do with this needle, because you want to keep it clean, is I'll find something to rest it on. So I'm going to take like this package and just 
kind of rest the needle on there so that it's not touching anything. The next step that we need to do is clear any residual air from this cartridge. So you stick the needle in and it doesn't go all the way in. All right, so we stick it in and it usually goes in about halfway and that's fine, that's how it's supposed to be. And then what you wanna do is you wanna retract the plunger all the way to the top, slowly. And this removes any residual air inside the cartridge. And then you just release the plunger and it goes back to a neutral position. And you just remove it like that. And now is the time to get rid of your air bubbles. So I find it's good if you just pull the plunger back even a little bit more like that. And then you can see I have a big bubble here. I'm just gonna flick that with my fingers. Sometimes tapping works just to get all of the air at the very top of the syringe. So when I push on the syringe, I just have air come out and no insulin because I don't want to waste the insulin. It's like a precious liquid to me. All right, so now we're gonna try to get rid of some of this. Yeah, you're gonna lose some insulin, but insulin smells so weird. In this syringe, I have about 160 units. I'm going to fill my cartridge now, stick the needle in again. It will only go about halfway in like that. And then you just slowly push down on the plunger and you'll feel some resistance, but that's totally okay. Just slowly push down and then pull the syringe out. There you go, your cartridge is now full. So we go back to the insulin pump and it's going to say, press the unlock button when completed, I've removed it. And then now it says, is the cartridge installed? So it's not, so all you do is you just simply slide it in like this and it just clicks in, it's super easy. And yeah, I say yes, the cartridge is installed. So it says that it's detecting the cartridge. So it's gonna take a while just to detect that it's there, that it's installed correctly. And now it's time to start the site. All right, so I've just opened my site, taken the lid off, and now it has this little tube here that I'm going to uncoil. Okay. So now I'm going to connect that to my insulin pump. So you just like this and then you twist them together until it's nice and tight. And now it's time to prime the tubing. So I like to take the needle cap off for this part, this blue needle cap. So I'll do that. It says fill tubing and all you do is press start. And it's starting to fill. So for my length of tubing, I know that typically I take 15 units to fill the tubing and this does take a while. So sometimes I am guilty of leaving the pump, going to throw out my trash and my sharps. I sometimes do that, but today since you guys are here, I'll stay with you. So we're just gonna watch for the insulin to flow through the tube and then we'll see drops come out and you need to wait for like around three drops to make sure. Also, Check your tubing for bubbles. You don't want to see any big spaces because if there are bubbles, you will not get any insulin and your blood sugar will go high. When you are filling your tubing, it's good to have your pump upright like this because then all the air is going to rise to the top and you'll get rid of the bubbles at the beginning and there won't be any left in the cartridge for later when you're actually using the insulin pump. So I've had a couple drops come out there and I've pressed stop. It's detecting insulin. Okay, so it says if you see drops at the end of the tubing press done. The last thing on my list here of check marks on my screen is to fill the cannula. So that involves me doing the site first. So let's do that. So I did here before, probably, I do around here a lot. So I'm gonna feel around and make sure I don't have any lumps. Maybe I'll do a bit lower. I might do a bit more on the side actually. So I'll take my alcohol swab and just swab the side and then take the sticky Thing off, pull back the little spring mechanism on this site, and then you just simply place the site over the spot and you press down on the side like this, and it's in. There you go, there's a site. It was really fast, I could hardly feel it. It stings just a little bit, but no big deal at all. So now I can fill my cannula. And then you wanna press the check mark in the upper right corner. Resume all insulin now. This will resume all deliveries. Yes, check mark, resuming insulin. That's it, that's a site, you're good to go. Now it's cleanup time. Um, so you put what you need to in the garbage, what you need to in the sharp spin. For this, I take this piece out, the needle in the middle, 
I take it out with pliers, I put it in my sharps bin, and I recycle the plastic part here. All right, that's it for my video. I really hope you guys found this helpful and that you enjoyed following me along with my site change. I will see you next time. Bye.